Hey folks, and welcome to Drinking Alone with Friends, a podcast where three friends drink alone together. My name's Chris. What up, what up? It's Tud. And I'm Obert. And it's uh, it's been a while, guys. Yeah. Yeah, Just sneak a little peek bit. behind the curtain. We, uh, we pre-recorded our last episode a little early, so it's been almost two weeks since we recorded an episode. Yeah, generally it's every Sunday night, but... Yeah. I was uh, traveling to California recently, and uh, I tried out some good beers there. Yeah, uh, no, I, yeah. I I saw some some of the pictures on the Insta. Yeah, Golden State good. Golden State Brewery. That's the one that made the Insta. I was surprised for the area I was in. Um, you know, I was in basically the Silicon Valley, which is it's like a peninsula right across the bay from San Francisco. And there's you know I don't know a couple million people probably who live in that area. And there was not a Just whole a lot million. of breweries. You know, like how many? I don't know how many Montana Montanas there are of people in <laughs> <laughs> in that peninsula in Silicon Valley. But I will say that uh, probably several Montanas worth of people. And there, I was I had a hard time finding. I'm like, okay, I can find some really good breweries here. Well, especially considering that it's California. Like California has a is has a lot of good breweries in it. Yeah, yeah. but they also have a lot of like people that's like saying like oh new england has a lot of good breweries too it's like oh yeah there's a lot of people it's a big state but uh california is a i see your luck chris california is a big state <laughs> is what i'm saying the, the new it's, state of new england we've outdone like Meg- saying all of new england was one state <laughs> we, we've, we've outdone mega coda yeah mega coda yeah. it's all new england now yeah mega england <laughs> mega england take that regular england yeah. no it, it makes the patriots seem a lot more uh Fitting the mega England Patriots, yeah. <laughs> the mega, the mega Red Sox. <laughs> no, that's uh, I guess, I guess what who, what would be the capital of mega England? Would it be Boston? It'd have to be Boston, it's the biggest city in mega England. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, I want it to be like Boston to mega London. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah. yeah, the mega London Red Sox. <laughs> 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 mega london celtics mega london bruins we've got yeah. this down yep it's mega right. london university now <laughs> wow that's awesome yeah oh man well that's cool yeah well yeah, i mean i guess that cool but also kind of surprising i figure with the, all those people that breweries would flock there yeah there was a lot of breweries a lot of good beer that i had um I, it's all on my my quest my march to 365 for the year Got to get those beer, uh, new beers resolutions. So, but yeah, that's that's where I've been. That's what I've been doing. That's cool, Tud. What have you been up to? So, uh, freezing. <laughs> if, if for, you know, the long and short. Uh, over the past week, uh, Connecticut has reached its you know final form of winter, where it was one degree for two days in a row. Then it got to fifty-five, which was awesome, and then it promptly dropped back down to the twenties. So. I've been here, been freezing, you know, sweat for one day, and then back to cold. Yeah, I don't miss that. Don't miss that at all. <laughs> that's that's mega England weather for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's supposed to be cold here tomorrow, but cold here is like 34. So, like, that's that's pretty cold. Um, at least I mean, we're not was... Chicago. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's true. They're going to be negative 60 by the time this episode drops. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, no. W- wind chills of minus 60. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I assumed as much, but still. That's, that still counts. That's not cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm looking forward to when it's warmer here than it is all throughout where all of my friends live and just being able to text them all. Be like, yeah, basking in the sun over here in Montana. <laughs> my mid, my my upper 30s weather. Any Anything <laughs> colder than like negative five is all the same, right? So like negative 60, negative six, it's all the same. Uh, I don't, I don't know about that, Todd. <laughs> I think it's a big difference. Yeah, yeah, that definitely is a big difference. Like when CJ was born, it was like this like crazy cold streak, and I couldn't even sit near a window, and that was like wind chills of like minus ten and minus fifteen. I feel like if it was ne- minus sixty, I wouldn't have been able to walk him to the car when we left. Yeah, when CJ was born, Caitlin and I went and sat in the treehouse line to get beer. That's yeah, dedication. that's right. That's that day. That was that day. It was a cold day. Uh, yes, yes, it happens. But but yeah, it's been a while, which means you know we haven't really had any beer in the last two weeks, right? That's how it works. Mm, exactly. I mean, on the podcast, 
<laughs> I, I did a bunch of California, but uh, but yeah, no, I'm getting pretty thirsty. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think it's about that time. So, what do you what do y'all what are y'all drinking tonight? I actually have a beer courtesy of a beer of the month club that I actually received as a Christmas present. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, this is I think news for the co-hosts of the podcast, but um, they shipped me. 12 beers this month, and um, what I'm drinking tonight is Hop Whoopin IPA from Oso Brewing Company out of Wisconsin. Okay. Yeah, it's actually, they got me. It, it came with a Malt of the that, Earth that newsletter. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little bit of the story behind the brewery and the beer. Yeah. So I'm not going to go through and read it all because it's definitely more of a newsletter thing than good podcast material thing. But and now Brendan presents to you reading the news. <laughs> <laughs> but I will I will share some of the highlights from this um, hop whooping. It's a their take on a smash beer, which is single malt and single hop, except they call it single malt and all sorts of hops. That's what they call smash. Okay. Yeah. So some of the highlights they say here is they use this Zeus hops, which I have never heard of before, but. They're strong bittering hops, uh, gives, giving us 99 IBUs. With a lightning punch. Yeah, exactly. Um, they say that's double IPA territory. I don't know if... I never knew that double IPA was based on the bitterness as opposed to alcohol, but I guess it kind of makes sense. They describe the aroma here as prominently spicy herbal character with undertones of juicy, fruity notes, and a touch of sharper citrus zest. So I'm going to dig in here and we'll see. Um, if I agree. Yeah, this is good. It's very light, very pale to the color. I'll hold it up to the web webcam here. Um, very pale color. And I definitely get those citrusy notes to it. I don't really get an intense bitterness like they're describing here. I mean, the IB user don't lie, but I think it's very drinkable for an IPA. Overall, I, I you know, reading about this brewery, in the middle of Wisconsin, they talk about they have 40 taps in total. 20 That's to 25 lot. of, yeah, 20 to 25 are their beers. And the other ones, they highlight Wisconsin brewers around the state. It's in Plover, Wisconsin. They said the middle of the state. So if I'm ever in the middle of Wisconsin, this is definitely a place I want to look up. They said they're moving to a new brewery on 20 acres of land. So it sounds like a real fox farm type of a place. Wow. Worth checking out. Yeah, Oso Brewing. I wonder so, if they have spotted calf or spotted cow on tap. Probably, if they have you know highlighting the best of Wisconsin, I wouldn't be yeah, surprised. Yeah, I was going to say that they're they're like the big boy over in Wisconsin is is spotted cow. They're everywhere. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah. They're, they're it's pretty good. But that beer looks fantastic. It's got a lot of good color on it. Yeah, it's a good. It's a good amount of frothiness in the head as well. I think. With that being said, New Glarus, sorry, is the brewery. Yeah, the brewery spotted, spotted cow. cow. Yeah. Spotted cow's the beer, but anyways. Yeah, so with that being said, I'm going to give this a solid three and a half. Um, it's a good go-to IPA that I would have no problem ordering at a bar. I wouldn't go out of my way to get it, and I wouldn't avoid it. So for me, that clock's in at three and a half. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like a, sounds like a solid smash IPA, I guess. Their, yeah. Their take, their take <laughs> on their a smash take IPA. On it. Yeah. No, it's it's good. So yeah, who's going next? I guess I'll go next. All right. So... <laughs> I see two cat lawyers in the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have my 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 one of my cat lawyers, Yuna, is on my desk, and then Oren is, of course, sleeping. So she must be taking notes for him. There you yeah. go. <laughs> She's the paralegal of the team. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes. So I am drinking tribute by Fourteenth Star Brewery out of Vermont. Okay, I've had that. I think I think a lot of you have had this, mainly because it's one of my favorite under the radar uh Vermont beers that nobody ever seems to talk about. Obviously Vermont's known for Sip of Sunshine, Heavy Topper, um anything from Lawson's, all basically all the good beers from Vermont. But in this one, too. So it's not the greatest beer in the world. It's just a tribute. No. <laughs> <laughs> so uh this it's an eight point one percent alcohol beer and the description is, it's a complex yet smooth malt base, serves as a stage for the hops to perform. Tribute has a beautiful golden color with a flavor and aroma brimming with citrusy hops. So with that, let's try it. 
Yeah, it sounds tasty. So this beer, honestly, and the reason I love it, and the reason I wanted to bring it on the pod, is it honestly tastes exactly like Heady Topper. Like, almost flavor for flavor, minus the, you know, Heady Topper has that little bite on the back end. Tribute does not. It's a lot more smooth on the back end. Um, but everything, other than that, it tastes extremely like Heady Topper. Lots of, lots of grapefruit, you know, very just New England style, but it's, you know, it pours exactly like a Heady Topper with the, the cleanness, uh, without the haze. Just a solid beer. So it's easy to see where they got the name from then. <laughs> it, it's yeah, their I, tribute actually, to Hetty. Yeah. I actually think that, that was a happy accident, but, uh, with the name, but it, it may be in some roundabout way. 14th Star Brewery is, was founded by two Afghanistan, uh, veterans and they, all their beers are basically a play on something from military term. So maybe at the same time as they were paying tribute to Hetty, they were also paying tribute to other things as well. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Yeah, that's a, it, they're a really cool uh, brewery. I have yet to go to their tap room, but it's on my short list of things to do. The one cool thing I will say about this brewery that I know of is every year Vermont puts on a homebrew competition, and the winner of the homebrew competition gets their beer brewed for one special production run by 14th Star. And oh, because that's cool. For, that's yeah. a neat contest. And because of it, it gets distribute, distributed around the area because 14th Star di- distributes to Vermont, uh, New Hampshire, New York, and I think some parts of Massachusetts as well. Oh, I was going to ask you, where do you pick up this beer? I bought it in Vermont. It just had a at a package store. Yes, yeah, it's okay. it's readily available everywhere. Oh, okay, cool. I've never, I, you know, I know you're talking about this brewery, and I, it's one I've never been to before, and I'm, uh, I'd like to check them out. Yeah, their breakfast stout is fantastic as well. Um, just a good solid brewery, very underrated. Um, obviously, with all the breweries in Vermont, it's hard to be. It's hard to separate from the crowd. Oh, yeah. These, these guys do a really good job. If you can't find Heady Topper in Vermont, pick up a tribute by 14 Star and you won't be disappointed. Having said that, I rate the Spear of 425. Oh, oh, that is solid. Yeah, I don't, I can't say I remember. I, I know I've had one a long time ago, but I remember enjoying it, but I don't remember what I rated it or anything. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, and you'll have to let us know if you ever make it to their tap house. I will. Yeah, I, I, it, where is where was the tap house again? Did you say? I know you said Vermont, but do you know their tap house is in Newton Street? Is that a town? No, it's street. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, I know exactly where that is. <laughs> it is the town it's in. <laughs> Hang on one you second. You take it right on Main, and then you just keep going till you get to Newton Street. Exactly. Like, how do you not know where <laughs> Newton Street is? It's the other road in Vermont. Right. <laughs> Maine is the one that goes north south. <laughs> <laughs> and Newton is the east west. <laughs> it makes up it's the fork of the V in Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> it is in St. Albans City. St. Albans City, Vermont. That hmm. also doesn't sound like a town. I've never heard of that place. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Just so everybody is aware of where this exactly is pinpointed on a map, it's north of Burlington. Okay. South south of Canada. Okay, that explains why I've never heard of it, because that's far. <laughs> so if you go to Burlington, you go north. If you've gone, you keep if, going. Yeah. If you made it to Canada, turn around. You've gone too you've far. You've gone too far. Exactly. <laughs> There's not another big town up there. So, yeah. Interesting. Okay, cool. Well, it's uh, it's officially made it to the list of breweries that I want to go to, which is ever-growing. Yeah, that list never gets shorter. So, Chris, what are you drinking tonight? All right. So I got a special beer. Ooh. And yeah, why, why unfortunately, Chris, oh, every beer is a special beer. Every beer is a special beer. How, tell us how this is extra special. This is an extra special beer. So here in Clarksville, we have a pretty good, pretty good drinking circuit of like seven or eight places that you can just go around. And Todd's been to quite a few of them, and there's some good beer. But there's a new brewery that's opening up. For, for reference, see the episode where we talk about how we can't drink after 30 anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely that's definitely one of them. Yes, yes. I think I've pretty much hit almost every single Clarksville brewery. Well, until until this upcoming Saturday, because there's uh, a new one opening. So like, I guess just I have just have to come, have to come back to Tennessee. That's it. So yes, there's a new brewery opening. It's called King's Bluff Brewing here in Clarksville, and I was I. Just so happened, I saw they they were opening. I didn't know when at the time, but I just shot them a message and I was like, "Hey, do you mind if I come and check out the place and meet you guys?" And they were like, "Yeah, come on down." So the other day, I went there. That's and That's really cool. So yeah, you went to the tap room and you met the owners. Yep, yep. I met the owner and the head brewer. That's awesome. Uh, they they are married and they were 
awesome people, Kristen and Dustin, who are now official friends of the pod. Which so, one's the, the owner? Oh, yeah, which one's the owner? Time. Which one's the head brewer? So the owner is Kristen, and the head brewer was uh, was Dustin. So uh, he brewed the beer, and she she was the brains behind the operation, as he so lovingly put it. So, <laughs> but they were uh, just great, great folks, and they invited me in and showed me their operation. Uh, they had four beer, four of their own beers on tap, which I am drinking one of them tonight. So, nice, like so, looks like a dark, malty, delicious beer. Yes, it actually is a dark, malty, delicious beer. Believe it or not, <laughs> how observant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, they had, but they, I mean, super awesome. I had a ton of fun with them. I asked them about four billion questions. Just tr- going to give you a little bit of a little bit of a background on them. So they're Clarksville, you know, born and raised natives. I, I don't know if born and raised. I don't know if there is, but they're from Clarksville, and they went to school in Clarksville, and. Sounds they like they're were born like, and raised. It's very possible. I didn't ask. I didn't ask where they were born. Okay, to be fair. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't want to question. False... Where were you raised? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, nice to meet you. Now, what hospital were you born in? Yeah. Okay, all right, that makes sense. But yeah. So, anyways, they've lived in Clarksville for a long time. Uh, I'll, I will. I'm certain enough to say that. And they were like, you know. Everybody drives to Nashville. Everybody drives to Nashville. But there's a lot of really good stuff in Clarksville. And there is. There is a lot of cool stuff in Clarksville. So they wanted to add to the community. So that's why they decided to set up shop there. Now, they had been brewing, or Dustin had been brewing, for eight years prior to opening. So he's been, you know, doing it for a long time. You know, he's, he's you know, gotten some awards from homebrew competitions, this, that, and the other thing. I was going to ask, just brewing out of his house or brewing professionally yeah. for some other brewery or... So he – and he, he told me the name, and I'm, I don't remember the name of the brewery, but he he brewed out of his house, and then him and one of his friends ended up brew, like brewing at a brewery, not for a brewery, but at a brewery. So I guess they knew someone, and I don't remember the name of the brewery off the top of my head. But but yeah, so they won some homebrew competitions, and then they decided, hey, you know, we want to open up a shop or open up a brewery. It took him about two years to get all in, all all the ducks in a row. But now they're finally opening this Saturday, which is pretty cool. And it's uh, it sounds like it's going to be really awesome. I mean, they're you know kid friendly, dog friendly, and they want to give back to the community. So they want to be able to partner with some of the other local businesses, and you know have them come in and like pair up and do fun things that way. And just for clarity, that's Saturday, February second, two thousand nineteen. They're opening. Yeah, 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 yes, yes. Okay. I, Unless I they to... see their shadow, and then they're not opening for six more weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ho- hopefully it's a cloudy day just, just because of that. Yeah, so February 2nd, they'll be opening, their grand opening, and I'm pretty excited for it because, I mean, always new breweries are great, but also it's a good brewery that's 10, 15 minutes from my house, which is even better. So That's even better. Yeah, you know, so eventually CJ's going to make his grand appearance and, you know... <laughs> And everybody's going to fall in love with them, as is tradition. Of course, but. right. <laughs> so uh, you buried the lead a little bit with your. You told us you have our dark, malty, delicious beer. Yeah. Um, what is this the name beer? of it? So this is their Thunder Red, and it's a red ale. If you couldn't, oh, um, if you couldn't get by the, by the name, yeah, that that red looks really dark. Yes, it is. It is very dark. It is way darker than uh reds that i'm used to which is probably why i like it so much because i was hesitant i'm generally hesitant around a red i don't know why uh it's something about them i generally don't really care for them but this one well much very... like redheads they suck your soul out yeah i don't know about that but <laughs> <laughs> but i uh... a joke all redheaded listeners don't worry yeah right yeah only Tud hates redheads now not, yeah. not myself and over two-thirds of the podcast likes redheads and um, red ales, and I I do like red ales. Okay, so, so two thirds of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but yeah, so I was talking to uh, Dustin when I was there, and he says that he adds Kara red. It adds more fullness and flavor, and the deep red color. So it really is. If you hold it up to the light, you can see the red, but it is very, very dark. And it's because of that Kara Red. So Kara Kara Red is the name of the malt that they use? Sounds like Yes. It. Yeah, it's it's a grain that they used. Okay. And that I don't know if that's something that's normal. I'm not I'm not really 
that into the grains and the malts and stuff. But but that's what he used, and that was uh, why it has a darker color. And I tell you what, it tastes delicious. It's it's very sweet, very 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 flavorful, like you would kind of kind of expect. You do get a lot of you know bitter, which is kind of what you would you would get from like a a red. And I don't know, just something about it. It's like you get some caramel notes. You get like it's just really, just a really solid beer. And I'm I'm a big fan, big fan. So, with that being said, I mean I'm still not the biggest red fan. So even though this is one of the better reds I've ever had, I, I'm still have that bias against it, I guess. But it's a solid like I would say it's a solid three seven five. I would order this again if I ever went back to the ever went back to the brewery. Which I'm sure you will. Saying something for a soul-sucking red. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One third of the podcast likes redheads. Um, but <laughs> but it's, it's actually kind of funny. Uh, the name Thunder Red is because when he was brewing this, and he gave me this little bit of background fun story, it was during a classic Tennessee thunderstorm. And I don't know if you all know, but it now storms in Tennessee. It's oh, crazy. Okay. Yeah. Now, what do those sound like? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. I can picture that. <laughs> now I know. Now I feel like I was there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. So between you know. between that and you making the twenty one noises on the last episode, I mean, that's dude. You have a job in radio. I think <laughs> that's right. So, anyways, he was he was brewing during one of those famous Tennessee thunderstorms, and right when he was getting towards flame out. He lost power. So, oh no! Yeah. <laughs> so he had to finish finish the brew and then send it through the wart chiller all by flashlight, which <laughs> kind of sucks. <laughs> especially since he was, I think he said it was a three barrel system that he was working on. So, like, that's a lot of beer for <laughs> to do by flashlight. So, yeah, yeah, it's a good thing that he was just about done with the process that he needed electricity for too yeah i know it's it's it was just kind of funny how that worked and then kind of unfortunate for the rest of it but hey. all in all came out with a good beer so. yeah made it for a good story and a good name yeah, yeah right yeah i'm looking forward to hearing up of uh, you following up with them in the future and their other beers too yeah absolutely so what was what was your favorite beer so they had a blonde on which i'm not generally a big blonde fan I, I think they're you're just, like blondes. You know, you're more a red, a red kind of guy. <laughs> no, I mean, really, if you think about it, I guess I'm a, uh, I guess brunette, brunette, could, yeah, or IPA colored haired. So <laughs> <laughs> I really uh, like those those hazy girls. Yeah, yeah. those hazy girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they had a they had a blonde on, and it was a little darker than I than I'm used to. So it was uh, it was it was good. I mean. It's a blonde. I'm not the biggest blonde fan. And then they had the Thunder Red. They had a IPA, and it was actually one of the Smash IPAs that we were talking about. And that was really good. It was made with all Chinook hops, which was kind of kind of interesting because you don't really see a lot of like soul Chinook beers. Yeah, and we haven't done Chinook on Hoppy Hour yet. I don't think. No, we haven't. Maybe no. that'll be a contender. Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe one of these one of these days I'll have to pick Sh up. Some Chinook's of that. always a hop I've been interested in because it is it is prominent in a lot of beers that I've liked over the years, and it's definitely an older hop than a lot of the ones we've talked about before. Yeah, yeah, and I did not know that. <laughs> and it, I mean, it's a good. It, it was a good beer. I I was like going to get that beer to have on the podcast, but then I was like, you know what? We do a lot of IPAs, especially myself. I do a mm. lot of IPAs. And Tud does a lot of IPAs, so I was like, "Let's add a red." I haven't done a red, so we'll get we'll get a red on here, and it's a good red. And then they had a you need a biscuit stout, which again I do a lot of stouts, so very it was very <laughs> good. It was a very it was very good, uh, uh, smoky, but like had like a really good. I don't know. I, don't, I can't really without having it to drink right now. I can't give. I can't do it justice. But very good beer. <laughs> so nice. Yeah, no, it it was a good time. I was very happy that they sat down with me for a couple hours, talked to me, and like kind of walked me through a bunch of stuff. And uh, they got like this awesome mural of downtown Clarksville, and they have they have two beers that are going to be coming out soon. Which it seems as though one's a hazy IPA, so I'll definitely be stopping in for that. And then the other one I think was another another stout. He says he likes to make his stouts, so 
I'm like, no, I like to drink the stouts. So there you go. <laughs> Match made in heaven. Yeah, you know, it's almost meant to be. So, but yeah, that's kind of like a new brewery highlight, I guess. I mean, uh, if you guys are in Clarksville, anybody listening, if you're in Clarksville, uh, past this upcoming Saturday, I would definitely stop by King's Bluff Brewing and say hi. Tell them Drinking Alone with Friends sent you. You can grab a sticker. We I left a bunch of stickers with them. So, uh, but yeah, you can say say we sent you, and they'll say hi. That's that's a podcast. <laughs> this is a podcast first, right there. Ladies and gentlemen, the first new brewery highlight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's. I, I, I mean, we just gotta keep an eye out for new breweries, and then yeah, we we'll, could we could make that a recurring segment. I have a new brewery. We got a couple of new breweries in the works between Connecticut and Montana. We could probably try and get something to happen. Yeah, yeah. there we go. That sounds good. But yeah, Kings Bluff. Check them out. We'll do next time in Tennessee. As long as that's my right. driver drives me there, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, Dan will be there. Let's face it. <laughs> Chris, I know we haven't mentioned it at all this podcast, but I can't help but notice that you're entirely buried in a sea of mail. Yeah, it's really becoming a hindrance. Yeah, I uh, see the it, giant stacks. Those seem like maybe a falling, a, a dangerous hazard for your, your young child running around. The the bag you're sitting on looks like a nice little like like beanbag chair, though. Yeah, basically all furniture in our house now is just mail that we have uh backlogged. So yeah. Um yeah, we do have some backlogged emails. I mean I mean regular mails. Regular mails. <laughs> print it out print it out emails. <laughs> yeah, print it out. And we have them. We love conservation on this podcast as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean we just we want to keep them forever, so Right. We archive all the old emails like they're in the Library of Congress. Exactly, Correct. yes. But we do have quite a few to get through, so we'll uh, take some time now to go through and hit up the mailbag. As you heard me, I'm ruffling through, rustling through right now. So, Basically the mail room. Yeah. <laughs> the, mail, <laughs> the mail house is what it really is boiled down to. So our first letter comes from... A friend of ours, Southwest Pennsylvania, she asks us if we could get non-alcoholic craft beer that tasted exactly like the alcoholic versions, would we drink it? Or do we drink it for the flavor or for the alcohol content? And that's from Rihanna, who is, again, southwest.pennsylvania on Instagram. That's a really interesting question. I I, I would say um, maybe. <laughs> I think I drink um, mocktails occasionally. You know, I'll just have like, you know, I'll spice up something like seltzer with a little bit of cranberry juice or water bitters and water's bitter than orange. <laughs> hey, <basically>, non-alcoholic <laughs> old fashioned. <laughs> right. Um, but I haven't had a non-alcoholic beer. I don't like ever. Yeah, that's true. I haven't either. I, I used me, to like me neither. You know, when I first started, like, the craft beer phase and, like, got into, you know, just trying them, and I remember there was a point where I was like, I've had a craft, I've had a beer, like, every day for, like, two months straight. That's bad, right? Like, that, this was, <laughs> that was a moment in my life. <laughs> and I used to tell myself, well, you know, I just drink it because I like the way it tastes. But then again, at the end of a long day of work, there's nothing better than a beer. And, right. I mean, like, I'm sure... A lot of that has to do with the way it tastes, but I'm sure I'm sure the other qualities are also a a factor. I th yeah, I think I would. I think I'd have to try it. I mean, are we talking in a hypothetical world where the non-alcoholic beer is like a hundred percent like drinking a heavy topper? Yes, or, I think that's what she's or trying Julius, to. Right. Or, I think that's what she's yeah. trying to say. I think she's trying to be like, yeah, you know, you can crack open this heavy topper that's eight percent alcohol or this heady topper heady nopper he yeah there you go heady nopper i was trying to come <laughs> up with something like that heady nopper that is zero percent alcohol but tastes exactly like an eight percent alcohol yeah i mean I, th I think for some when you boil it down basically non-alcoholic beer is almost like soda it's just carbs and carbonation so i i, I when i want to relax and i don't want to drink a beer sometimes i'll just crack open a can of coke or if you have a hangover or if I have a hangover, you know, you know my tricks. But now there's times when I'm like, you know what? I probably I'll be good. I won't drink a beer tonight. I'll just have soda instead. So that's kind of like a non-alcoholic beer in that regard. Yeah, 
I can, you know, I can see this being a good, like, your friend is getting way too wasted and you want him to slow down, but he, <laughs> you know, and you could just give him one of these, these non-alcoholic craft beers that taste exactly the same and they think they're drinking a beer, but really they're not. I think that, that, there might be a market for that, Rihanna. Yeah. I'm, I'm, this is an interesting idea, but part of me wants to kind of say that I think I just wouldn't. I mean, yeah, the flavor of a beer is great and awesome, and I I, I enjoy it. But at the same time, if you're going to take in all the carbs and the calories and everything that has to go along with the beer, too, wouldn't you want the alcohol? Otherwise, like Obert said, why are you not having a Coke? That's a good point. So basically, you're you're in it for the alcohol. I I, I guess I I guess I would be saying it that way. Yeah, I mean, it the, the flavor is great, but at the same time, if you're going to inject, it's you know. I'm assuming a non-alcoholic version of Hetty Topper is still 300 and some odd calories. Yeah. Well, I'll say what. Let's let's post this as a poll Friday morning, Ooh. and we'll see what our listeners think. Yes, that's a that's a that's a good that's a good one. Okay. Yeah. So keep your keep your eyes on the Instagram feed, folks, for Friday. We want you to weigh in and and let us know what you think. Would you drink non-alcoholic beer? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. There we go. So we'll we'll set it up to a poll, and that's going to be the official stance of drinking alone with friends. So there you go. Whatever that comes out with. All right. Yeah. So the so if you would mind handing the mailbag over to me, Chris, I have. Sure. Uh, yeah, I have the next the, the next letter here uh, from Joe. Joe asks: Growing up where I lived in New York, we had liquor stores, and then we had beer and soda distributors. When I moved to Tennessee, everyone referred to what we call the liquor store as a package store. And I've heard you guys call them that as well. What is the origin of calling it a package store? I imagine it came from not wanting to say you were going to get liquor or something. Um, That's a good question, Joe. Yeah, it is a good question. And I think, uh, you know, just calling it the packy is what we do, you know? (laughs) It's just, I don't know why. We just do it. Go go into the packy. Let me ask you this, Chris, because I'm surprised. I didn't know they called them package stores in Tennessee. I'm actually kind of excited that they do. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, I didn't know that either, and I don't know if it's just because I didn't talk to enough folks, but I, I feel like I've had people call them liquor stores. Now, that being said, like, the Clarksville area is a lot of folks that, you know, aren't from Tennessee, so Weird, maybe I weirdos. just... Okay. Yeah, we're all we're all transplants down here, so maybe I just have met a lot of folks, but that's uh, that is interesting. I'm I'm glad they do call it package stores because that's what I'm used to. <laughs> you don't sound like such a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Well, I'll one, tell you one what. One less thing you have to learn. I did some research on uh, the answer to this, and I found came across this pretty interesting article, which we'll put in the show notes. It's called "The Origins of the Package Store: Not Something to Keep Under Wraps" by Robert F. Moss, posted on robertfmoss.com. And before I get into it, what first thing he does is dispels my theory for why it's called a package store do you guys have you guys have any theories or were you what did you think why it was called a package store mine was and it's probably wrong is that because of the fact that it's liquor or beer or something it's alcoholic content you have to have it in like a brown paper bag when you leave like a package sort of thing it's yeah that that was exactly my theory too okay i'm gonna go with it's probably just some leftover old rule from the prohibition because new england is old timey like that yeah it's like so, a blue, it's a blue law i guess i should right. say yeah so so he says right here in the article one common explanation here is that various states not wanting their citizens to be seen carrying disreputable liquor bottles on the street mandated that liquor stores sell all of their goods in brown paper bags that is in packages this derivation is based upon the method of historical research i like to call quote just making stuff up for there are no state laws that require that. <laughs> really? Um, it's it? bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting too. So then – and I, I won't read through the whole article here for you. But just to give you guys the, the quick notes. And again, I, I encourage you to read this one because it's, it's pretty interesting. But it all dates back to a court case in 1890 of uh, Lazy v. Hardin. And the bottom line at the end of the case, it came down to that – Federal law didn't ban the importation of alcohol into the state. Um, as long as the beer was still in its, quote, original package, it was legal and could not be confiscated. So after that ruling, a bunch of states 
opened what they called original package stores, which meant selling beer or whiskey in the same bottles or packages in which they received them from out-of-state out wholesalers. And this was to combat people like watering down or tampering with their containers because before this point, most most places got their beer and liquor in kegs or barrels, and you would just kind of bring your own jug in and your kind growler. of like a growler. Exactly. Yeah. And you would just go and get it refilled there. Um, and then it would you would take it home, not in the, quote, original package. Yeah. So how that came to be associated with Connecticut and apparently North Carolina isn't entirely clear why we are the only states that still call it that. And I guess Tennessee, too. But um, I just thought this was a pretty cool, pretty cool bit of history. Glad we could share that one. That is really cool. That is really cool. Yeah. Hmm. Well, thanks. So yeah, Robert F. Moss. We'll, uh, we'll put him in the show notes. Learn okay. something new today. Yeah, that's awesome. And I just want to throw this out there. Uh, Joe was nice enough to take part in our beer recycling program. So uh, tune in, tune in next week for a special recycled beer from her. So ooh, yeah, nice. That'll be pretty cool. Oh, so you know Joe. I do know Joe. Yes. So that's why she knows people in Tennessee calling it package stores. It's just you. <laughs> yeah, right. It's me. <laughs> okay. Glad we got that cleared up. Yes, yes, yes. So I, I do I know thought Joe. it was a thing. It's really just you. Got yeah, it. it's really just the Connecticut, the Connecticutian. That's right. Oh, um, man. Okay. So our next one, it comes from uh, Mom of the Pod. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll read this one. You want to read that one? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's fitting, I, I guess. I, I wonder whose mom it is. <laughs> this email comes from Mom of the Pod, Mama Tedesca. It says, Can you tell me about milk stouts? Are they actually made with milk? That's so, a good question. And it is a very are, good question. These are becoming a lot more popular in yeah. recent recent days, years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I love myself a good milk stout. So, um, as we discussed on one of our prior episodes, the difference between a stout and a porter. A milk stout is simply a stout that rather than using, you know, the yeast or the, the sugar from the malt and the barley in the brewing process, uh, lactose is added during the brewing process as the sugar that the yeast will eat. Um, therefore, it creates a slightly milkier flavor of the beer. Um, they're not actually taking, you know, a gallon of milk and pouring it in the beer, but rather the, the lactose, which is just milk sugar and putting and adding that to the beer. Okay, in addition to the natural sugars that are derived from the malts of the beer. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I know that is – that. I mean, the long of the, – the, the short of the long of it is that, but you could also – I'm reading a uh, little bit of extra notes, just a little bit of fun stuff. You can also do the same thing by using a larger portion of caramel and crystal malts. The sweetness is different, but they they would technically be both be considered milk stouts in that sense. But that's even if they're not made with lactose, right? Even without the lactose, interesting. That's, yeah, that's a good bit of knowledge. Yeah, right yeah. I, I didn't know it until I looked up this uh, this one this one thing about it. But pretty pretty neat. But it's a good question, and you know that's why we're here. We're here to enlighten our folks about all of these cool beer things. So thank you, thank you, Mom of the Pod. Appreciate the hashtag mom of the pot. <laughs> <laughs> so next next letter comes from friend of the pod Sal, and uh, he I know we talked about it a few episodes ago, but he is going to disagree with Drew when it comes to cellaring beers. Drew was Drew was anti cellaring beers. Sal says there is a place for it. And he says, for the right beer, it can change a lot of L flavors. Listener controversy. I yeah, love I know. It. See? We're, we have two friends battling it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, he said, pod, pod listener fight club. That's, that's right. That's right. So he says, for the right beer, it can change the flavors and the smells profoundly. Any harshness will mellow away. Uh, one of the more fun parts, of course, is that it will continue, for the right beer, it will continue to ferment while cellaring, increasing the alcohol content. So... You know, that's always uh, some pluses, but he also says that an interesting thing to do is what I've never done this before, um, and I didn't know this is what they were called, but it's called a vertical tasting. So if you have beers that are released every year and they're made well and made consistent, then you can buy a few, enjoy them fresh, and cellar one. And then the next year, you can go out, buy a few, and enjoy the cellared one with the fresh ones to notice the differences, which is pretty cool. 
I never never thought about doing that before. Yeah, or I like the idea of like maybe buy a six pack, drink you know, buy a six pack on January first of twenty nineteen, drink one in, in twenty nineteen, and then next um, January first buy a six pack again twenty twenty, and then you can do for six years. You'll have be able to taste the differences until that sixth year. Then you can try ages one through six beers. That'd be pretty cool to do. Yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing with Singularity uh, from Stubborn Beauty is every year they come out with one. Chris, I think you have some of the older ones too. Every year they come out with a different version. It's a stout and, you know, I end up drinking one of the new ones and one of the old ones every year just to compare. Yeah, I actually have, I think the last three years, thanks to you, you brought down the newest one. But I think I have, <laughs> yeah, I think I went through and I have, I have the last three years to go and uh, drink through. So pretty excited about that. I mean, those are a little different because they are a little different every year. They don't do the same exact thing every year, but it's still pretty cool. You know, Sal does say that if you're buying a beer just to save it without ever knowing what it tastes like fresh, he seems silly. So he does agree with Drew on that, on that note. Yeah, he says, you gotta try it before you age it. Right, yeah. I, and that makes sense. I mean, that does make sense. Um, but he says, great show. We'll certainly continue listening in the future. So, well, thanks, hey, Sal. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Friend of the pod. Yeah. All right, so to close out the mailbag here, if you hand it back over, Chris. Yeah, hold I on. have a, I have I have a, our last letter from Drew, who is the only one to send in, and this is maybe bad uh, bad news for us in the future, but I guess if it was that easy, we would all know. The only hangover cure we got anybody to write in with. Everybody else just suffers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he he has a technique. He says my favorite hangover cure for small to moderate hangovers. I think that's also part of the key is exercise. Get outside, run a couple of miles, get your body moving, and sweat a little bit. It's tough to get started, but I always feel way better afterwards. Get rid of the haze. Yeah, now, I, I, I think I I, th- I think he's got a point there. I think part of this is having the ability to run a few miles. <laughs> sure. <laughs> See, yeah, for me, I think it's a, more about the fresh air than it is the sweating. <laughs> I, um, for me, if, I'm, if I can get outside and just go for a hike or even just a walk around the neighborhood, I think that does a lot of help. I ran to the mailbox. Yeah. <laughs> but I think you've got to tough it out. You can't just go for a little bit. You've got to go for like half an hour, and, then, and that'll kind of help. But again, this is for... For scale one to five hangovers, not the not the six or seven on the Richter scale of hangovers. <laughs> so, AKA, anytime you have a hangover over thirty, right? Yeah, yeah, over thirty. This is you've had two beers. You can right, exactly. <laughs> um, but no, thanks for that that hangover cure, Drew. And again, I want to shout out our shout a call out to the listeners. Um, if they have any other hangover cures, we're still desperate. We're still suffering. So. Let us yeah. know if you have something we can do, anything. We're, we're, we'll try it. Yeah, and uh, and that was our last of our mailbag segment. Uh, thank you again for sending them all in. Uh, of course, if you ever have anything you want to send in at any time, just hashtag follow the email, and that's dawfpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, we love reading all your stuff and sharing it with our listeners. Yep, we, we read every single email, so keep on sending them. So with that, I think it's that time. We need to raise our frosty mug of wisdom. <sighs> Todd, why don't you why don't you lead us off this week? Sure thing. So my handle this week is going to be something interesting that I found while browsing Reddit the other day. Somebody on Ask Reddit had asked uh, what people thought was the quote unquote perfect song, and oh, they, I, I saw this too. <laughs> yeah, so they had thousands and thousands of comments um, of people just you know naming. You know, you name the song, it's probably on the list. But one of the cool things about having an active community like Reddit is that somebody ultimately has more time than you do on their hands and can take those lists and put them into playlists. So for anybody out there who's a Spotify subscriber, if you go to Spotify and search perfect, uh, all lowercase letters with a period at the end, you can pull up the, the list of all the songs that were recommended on Reddit as the quote unquote perfect songs. It's about <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's incredible that somebody took the time to do it. Um, it's about sixty hours long, but it's full of just some some things I had never heard of 
But obviously, you know, some of the classics, like, you know, there's 30 Led Zeppelin songs and 20 Pink Floyd songs. And it's just a great mixture of music. And yeah, genre spanning of everything. Right. Yeah, I listened to it for a few hours. And uh, yeah, I think they, they pretty much nailed it. They have a very good playlist. You go from every, everything from Led Zeppelin to Warren G to uh, 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 Frankie Ocean to Frankie Valley to Michael Jackson. It's It's incredible. I recommend going to check it out. It's worth it's worth your time. I highly doubt anybody's going to listen to all 60 hours, but you'll find some stuff that you like and you'll probably find some stuff that you never heard of before, but you, you know, will be new favorites for you. I mean, you know someone already has listened to all 60 hours, right? Like, I was trying to. There's but... like with without a doubt in my mind someone has. And how <laughs> many times is With Arms Wide Open by uh by Creed is that on there? I think a whole zero times. <laughs> there can't be. I'm going to write in. I'm writing in. <laughs> you just make your own playlist called Perfect Dot Two, and it's just all of those songs plus every other one you've added in with arms wide open. <laughs> so, mind if I go next? Sure. Here you go. No, Here's go ahead. Right. Thanks, Todd. Um, I'm doing something a little different for my handle this week. I'm actually going to use my my handle and my mug of wisdom to hold it out there like a beggar asking for change because i could use some some listener wisdom and co-host wisdom um i sent these guys a picture the local brewery near me one of the local breweries great northern brewing company is doing for the winter carnival a annual tradition which is the beer barter so what they do is they have a competition where everybody can enter and you kind of like a like a king sitting in front of court you can approach the brewers and offer up something to do or trade for a year's supply of beer interesting Interesting. yeah so i'm 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 not gonna say i'm determined to win they but so they give you they give you a case a week is there only one winner weeks there's only one winner whoever has the best thing to barter for a case a week of beer um they will they will trade and i'm i haven't looked to see what the previous winners are i'm guessing i'm probably outclassed here probably need to like give them my car or something is it is it outside of the rules to bring three grand in cash i'm assuming so (laughs) i'm assuming if it's (laughs) if it's let me just buy a 52 cases from you then um you probably aren't really following the spirit of the contest i mean you've bartered you traded cash and cash for product yeah, I think that's just called buying, though. <laughs> but it's right after we. So yeah, again, it's Winter Carnival this weekend, so we're having a parade on Main Street, and this is this is ha- the reason I'm calling, making a call to our listeners because that's just happening this Saturday. So there's something I can do to, you know, if you guys are hearing this on Thursday, if you guys can have a suggestion for me, it's something I can do or trade by Saturday. Uh, I'm intrigued to see if maybe I can win this beer for for a year. Did you ever receive one those tables that Chris made us in the mail? Um, I'm assuming that they're <laughs> on their way because I haven't seen it yet. Because you could always try to barter a handmade table. That's a good point. Yeah, behind the couch table. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, so I'll, needless to say, on um, Saturday, February 2nd, I'll be there uh, for <laughs> Trying to barter. Day. At, at the very least, I'll be watching. And I'll report back with... What the winners have, maybe not next episode, but the episode a- episode after, I can tell you guys who won and and what the and uh, what they ended up trading. Okay, yeah, very cool. All right, here you go, Chris. Oh well, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to recommend with my final handle on the Frosty Mug of Wisdom uh, some of my favorite books, and I don't read a lot of books, but when I do, it's almost always these. Two, and that is the King Killer Chronicles by Patrick Rothfuss. So I'm sure everybody by this time has already read them because they're amazing. I never have. Y- you should. I actually I know this one. This this book is in your house. I know it is. I know it is because <laughs> I started it and I just never finished it. I read like the first like chapter. Yeah. So there's currently two of a supposed thir- three book series um and it's uh the name of the wind is the first and then a wise man's fear is the second book and they're just spectacular i list i mean i don't read i listen to them on audible and i listen to them once a year at least i just they're so good i really? never yeah i love i love these books 
And wow, that's dedication to re-listen once a year. I've I've probably read the first book three times and the second book three times because they they came out. The first book came out over a decade ago at this point. Yeah, um, I mean they uh, we're still waiting for book three. Yeah, yeah, I think the first book came out in two thousand seven. Um, but yeah, if you like fantasy stories, especially with it's a very cool magical world and um the author patrick rothfuss does a really good job of world building the best part is is i've read every single game of thrones book but i haven't read this or harry potter i feel like i'm feel like i'm missing something yeah. in my fantasy reading life yeah i think you are i mean these two books are great and i, I think i've told you this probably a thousand times about how much i like these books but uh they're yeah they're great and i mean it's just I don't know. They the way he writes these books makes me care about the main characters in a way that I haven't cared about main characters in books for like a long time. And of course, it snowballed into me listening to a bunch of Brandon Sanderson and stuff. But whatever, that's that's a whole other whole other. That's the best thing though is when you find a good author, it'll let you it'll lead you to other amazing authors. By the way, just as a aside to all this fantasy stuff, and we're gonna get well. This is a teaser for next week's episode. I have finally started to watch the Harry Potter movies. Nice. Have okay. you noticed how many toilets there are? I watched an entire movie where, like, most of the movie took place in a toilet. Okay. In a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Pooter. <laughs> I have I have come to the conclusion so far. By the way, just so we're we're clear, I'm through three movies. Okay. And I am convinced that Harry Potter might be the worst wizard on the face of the planet. Yeah, he's not. He's not a good one. No, he's not very not very talented. Yeah. So, um, it's it's kind of interesting to just watch how bad of a wizard he is so far. Well, you still got five movies to go, so maybe maybe you'll be surprised. Maybe he becomes the best wizard. Perhaps, but I'm not counting on it. Yes. Yeah, spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't either. <laughs> so, with that, thank you all for listening. Uh, we'd like to thank the breweries that provided today's beers. I'm going to start first with thanking 14th Star for their beer tribute. And I'm going to thank Oso Brewing Company for the hop whooping. And I'm going to thank New Brewery in Clarksville, Kings Bluff Brewing, for their Thunder Red. Please make sure that you guys are all going out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Untapped at, and following us at DAWF Podcast. Again, as you heard with the mailbag segment today, make sure you're hashtag following the email with your comments, questions, general thoughts, concerns, uh, the hate mail. We still love the hate mail. Keep that coming. Uh, email again in case you didn't catch it during the mail segment. DAWF Podcast at gmail.com. Um, also, make sure that you're hitting us up for stickers or in the case of in Tennessee. Go to the breweries near you, and you will find our stickers too. Most likely, if you if we've been there, you'll see us. Um, we usually sneak our stickers in cool locations so people can see them. Uh, make sure on Friday that you go to our Instagram and respond to our poll about whether or not you would drink a non-alcoholic beer if it tasted the same as a regular beer. Please go to iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe. Um, and then make sure you give us a rating by going to iTunes and giving us a five-star rating and writing a little review. It helps more than you guys realize. Uh, the more reviews and the more ratings we get, the higher we go up in the rankings, the more people find us. And with that, I'm Tud. My name's Chris. And I'm Obert. And remember, if you're drinking alone, do it with friends. So, yeah, so uh, Sir Ian McKellen did not play no, Albus yeah. Dumbledore. That is crazy. No, you're thinking of Daniel. You know, I I knew he played games, but I swear. Not.